And what brings you here? I want to learn meditation. Uh -huh. Have you done meditation before? I try. How did you try? <laughs> I'm trying to focus on my breath, but I always get distracted. What? what? I try to focus on my breath, but I always get distracted. Yeah, but that is normal. What kind of job do you have? Teacher. Teacher. Yeah. Teacher just like the students, constantly distracted. <laughs> the students are not distracted, they're constantly playing around with their phones. Huh? <clears throat> and the more you play around, the more distracted you are, and the more difficult it is to focus on the breath. <clears throat> when you do sitting meditation, you close your eyes, sit comfortable, and then forget about you know, your sitting position, and then just focus at the tip of the nose, observe that the breath comes in and the breath goes out. Not so difficult. And when the mind goes out, you bring it back. That's where the difficulty is, because the mind doesn't want to go back. <laughs> it wants to think, yeah? it wants to imagine. Yeah? All our life we imagine this and imagine that. Yeah? But our imagination is not reality. You notice it? Yeah? Sometimes we do notice it, yeah? when we run into problems. <laughs> <Yeah? clears throat> when suddenly the world is not the way that we think the world is. Yeah? <clears throat> or the people that we are with, together with you know, are not the, the way we thought you know, they are. Yeah? <clears throat> Same for your students, yeah? And the students are not the way that you imagine it to be when you went on at the university, yeah? You have to, you know, you have to, to, to live up to the fact how they are, yeah? And then you deal with the reality, yeah? And that's difficult because you are programmed. You are robots, yeah? <clears throat> So when you do walking meditation, you walk up and down, yeah? And each time you turn around, yeah, check, you know, if you have been with the breath or not, yeah? Don't worry where it got lost or why it got lost. No, just notice, yeah, I haven't been, yeah? Now for this one path, I will be with my breath, yeah? And if it's so difficult, take put with breathing in and do with breathing out, yeah? Then you have two crutches, yeah? <clears throat> and once the mind gets calm, you know, I mean, you can let go of one of the crutches, yeah? You can either let go of the Buddha or let go of the breath, you know, and then concentrate just on the, on the Buddha or just on the breath. Yeah? We work to live, to sleep, to eat, and to play around. Yeah? What is a normal day? Yeah? <clears throat> sleep eight hours, work eight hours, eat three hours, <laughs> and then have, we have only three hours left. Yeah? Most of the time, you know, we, we use it for, for things that are not really useful. Yeah? Conversation with this person, conversation with that person, being on the phone or, you know, <clears throat> With somebody, you know, just looking up something on our smartphone. So most of the time we waste, huh? No? Huh? Killing time, called killing time, yeah? We have so much time on our hands, so we kill it, yeah? What happens, you know, when, when you meet somebody, why do you have to engage in a conversation? Ask yourself. And what is the purpose of the conversation? Just because we see somebody and we talk, 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 yeah? And the Thais are very good at talking, yeah? They can talk for hours. Tell me, thou. Koi kan lai chumong tu. Sam si chumong na. Sevala. When we finish talking, I mean, there's just more rubbish in our heart. Yeah? So that's why we fo constantly focus you know, on, <coughs> on either the Buddha or on the breath.
Make meditation your number one priority in your life. Start start with the Buddha or start with the Anapanasati, that is breath meditation. When you do, uh, what is your name from Bunai? My name is Adeline. Adeline, yeah. So when, when, when you focus on the breath, you know, focus here, yeah? Don't follow the breath. I tend to follow. What? I tend to follow. No, you should not. No. Just stay here. No, when the breath goes in. No, when the breath goes out. Know that the breath is long. Know that the breath is short. Know that the breath is calm. Or know that the breath is not calm. Yeah? That's already enough, yeah? And then just stay here. The concentration is here. Knowing yeah, comes from the heart. Huh? <clears throat> in the beginning, you probably will have to feel it. That's why we take the nose, because the breath comes in through the nose. And yeah, I mean, we can feel it. But later on, we can't feel it because the breath becomes subtle. So we know it. And the knowing gets stronger and stronger and stronger. Hmm? Lots of people say, you know, oh, yes, I'm so calm now, but the breath disappears. No. The breath does not disappear. The knowingness of the breath becomes so predominant that, that there is nothing else than knowing of the breath. The breath doesn't disappear. Our interest in the breath disappears. Your English is good enough for you to understand? Good. The same holds true for the people from Latvia. Yeah, you understand, you know, how, how, how much... Do you understand? 50%, 60%? What? 100%. Hmm? 100%. 100%. That's good. Even better than me. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, what? Reflect, yeah? I mean, if you have time, if you don't do a, a anapanasati, yeah? reflect about the life. What is the purpose of your life? Huh? Why, why are you born? Born to do what? Born to kill time? You can't even... You, you, you have so much time on hand that you kill it. Huh? Yeah? Kill it with playing around here, having useless conversations. Huh? <clears throat> doing this, doing that. I mean, a human state, this morning I said, the human state is very difficult to obtain. It's a teaching of the Lord Buddha. Yeah? Very difficult to obtain a human birth. And when we obtain a human birth, then it is very difficult to find the true sasana, to find the true religion, yeah? to find the true teaching. And the third thing that is most difficult is yeah, to find an arahant or to find the Lord Buddha. Yeah? So three things that are very difficult to obtain. And the Thais are very good because they have everything yeah, in their country. Yeah? They have the, the, the true religion yeah, and they have arahants around. And they still don't do, yeah? they do, still don't put any effort. They think that in the next life will be better. Yeah? Maybe it will be better, yeah? But we don't have the true religion anymore and we don't have our hands around. <clears throat> and without that, we are caught, caught in the cage or in the hamster wheel, yeah? Running, 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 not going anywhere, yeah? And when, when you look at your life, I mean, that is what is happening. Running, 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 yeah? Running after good things, you know, then, that, <clears throat> and then the good things disappear, you know, running again, yeah? about after our wishes and then running again, running all the time until we die. And then, then we want another life and then another life. Most, prefer, most preferably a human life. But what did the Lord Buddha say? A human life is very difficult to obtain because we do have to keep the five precepts. And that is, for most of us, including myself, it is not easy. When I was a lay person, I didn't keep the five precepts all the time. Sometimes, yeah. <clears throat> so I remember this, yeah. So don't waste, don't waste this precious human birth. Yeah? What else did the Lord Buddha say about human birth? 
He said the human birth, you know, is a, huh? or <coughs> a human being is just like a jumping ball. Huh? I mean, he has the best opportunities to jump out of, this, of the hamster wheel hmm? or to find the door out of the hamster wheel or to jump into the stream. Why? Because we have, huh? we have Dukkha and Sukkha for Pokan. About the same, yeah? We can have Sukkha, Sukkha that means happiness, you know, 50% of the time we can have happiness and 50% of the time we will have unhappiness, huh? or Dukkha, or dissatisfaction, or disease. Yeah? Most of us, when you look at your life, most of us, you know, are, I mean, are happy with just one or two percent of happiness per day. Huh? That makes them go on. Mm -hmm. If you don't have any happiness during a day, you know, we get depressed. Mm -hmm. But just a few moments of happiness during our day yeah, makes, makes our day. Yeah? And then we can go on. Ah, yeah, that was nice, yeah. And then we go on in the next day. So little happiness do we need. Mm -hmm. so, so little satisfaction do we need just to go on, to continue, and to continue, and to continue living, and always thinking, always dreaming that tomorrow will be better, or the next life will be better, it depends on where we come from. Hmm? <clears throat> When we come from the West, we don't think about the next life, because then our religion doesn't teach about the next life, Christianity. So, remember this, please. Please, open your ears, yeah? listen very sharply. A human birth is very difficult to obtain. And when you are human, when you are a human being, it is very difficult to find the true sasana, the true religion. How many people are living in this world? How many people are interested, actually interested in religion? There are many religions, yeah? I mean, there's, what is it, Christianity, Muslim, Hinduism, yeah? Taoism, Taoism, and so on. Yeah? So many different kind of religion teaching. They all have one thing in common, yeah? being good. That is common to, to most of the religions, at least the ones that I know. Yeah? Being a good person, you know, not harming living, be not harming living beings, yeah? not stealing. Yeah? <clears throat> Respecting, even respecting your father and mother and so on, and respecting other people. Yeah? No sexual misconduct is it in most of the religions. Yeah? But there's only one religion that opens the gate for us, and that is Buddhism. That tells us yeah, that there's life after life after life, yeah? and that there's sometimes a life as a human being, sometimes as an animal, sometimes as a ghost, <clears throat> sometimes in the hell, and sometimes in the heaven. Yeah? And if you don't find the way out, we, we get stuck into this cycle of birth and death. And when, when, when you could remember, I mean, there, there are billions of lives that you already have lived, yeah? in all sorts of different kinds of fashion. I mean, you've been probably to most of the realms of this universe. There are 31 realms of existence, 25 in the, in the heavenly realm, huh? and then the human realm, then the animal realm, then the ghost realm, and then the demon realm, and, and the hell realm. Huh? To the lower realms, we probably have been most of the time. Hmm? To the higher realms, maybe one, yeah? not so often. So remember, you know, human life is a precious thing. And it is also the jumping board. When we see, when we see the dukkha, and we see the dukkha, when we are here, we see the dukkha. Yeah? We can see the dukkha in the morning. Yeah? We can see the dukkha when we try to practice and the mind doesn't want to, to, to go onto, onto the point of reference or onto the object that we investigate or that we, that we try to concentrate on. So it is difficult. And the dukkha, the dukkha of a practitioner is much more, much more predominant than, than the dukkha of any person in the world. Yeah? What do people do when they have dukkha? And they go and eat ice cream or eat a cake or anything sweet, yeah? I mean, that's what people do when they have dukkha, yeah? 
Or they go and see a movie or, or, or have, just have a useless conversation with somebody and then they feel better hmm? most of the time. <coughs> yeah. But we have to face Dukkha here. Yeah? We cannot evade the Dukkha. Huh? We can observe it, yeah? we can see it and we can see what is the cause of our Dukkha. And the Lord Buddha, you know, told us, you know, what the cause of our dukkha is. He said it's our desire, wanting or wishing things to be otherwise than they are. A very simple statement. And it, it's so beautiful, this teaching of the Lord Buddha. It is so amazing. It's so simple, yeah? There's nothing complicated. You don't have to believe in this God or in this prophet or in that prophet, yeah? Yeah, you just, yeah, you just... <laughs> believe in the laws, you know, the laws of the universe, and, and they're simple, just like, this, just like the law of gravity, yeah, the physical law of gravity, you know, whatever you throw up comes down. Very simple, yeah. And whatever we do, whatever we think, whatever <clears throat> we speak, you know, comes back to us. That is the law of karma. Very simple. Nothing complicated and nothing, nothing mystic about all this religion. There's no mysticism. As everything is explained very rational. And probably that's why I like it so much. Very rational. Yeah. When you do this, you know, then this is happening. When you do that, that is happening. When you go along the path, then you see this. Yeah. He describes the path to the end of Dukkha, you know, very clearly. And when, when you do this, you will see all the signs that he is talking about. But if you, of course, if you don't go, you know, you don't see the signs. You only imagine to see the signs. And then in the end, you know, you imagine to be free, but you're still stuck. It happens to quite a few people who think a lot, who imagine a lot. And even when they practice, they imagine to be in some Mahdi where actually they are not, yeah? They just think they are in samadhi because now the calm is, uh, the breath is calm. No, that is not samadhi. Hmm? Just when the breath is calm, sometimes it happens. Yeah? We, we just look at something, but we are not in samadhi. In samadhi is, is a special, is a special <coughs> realm where we are, oh, a safe house, you know, where, where we can rest, where we can concentrate, where we can collect our energy that is during the day when we go out or when we are in the world, that is completely distributed. <clears throat> distributed by thinking about that, doing this, yeah, doing, doing multitasking and so on and so on. That's where our <clears throat> energy gets distracted. When we go into concentration, into one-pointedness, the, the, all the energy of our chitta, you know, collects into one point. And then this one point becomes very, very powerful. And then we can use this concentration <clears throat> and the knowing about, you know, the, the knowing about the object that we observe to investigate the things that we believe we are. What, what do we believe we are? Of course, we believe we are the body. Yeah? And then the second most important thing we believe we are the feeling. I feel bad, I feel good, I feel happy, yeah? or I am happy, yeah? or I am afraid. Oh, I'm lonely. What is this? There's a feeling. You know, there's a feeling of loneliness. There's a feeling of fear. Who sees it? Huh? Ask yourself sometimes. Don't get, don't get easy, so easily deluded. Huh? Just because somebody in, in your ears tells you, you know, I am sad. Huh? And you start believing it. You say, yes, my Lord, yeah, I am sad. Yes, my Lord, I'm depressed. Yes, my Lord, I'm happy. Yes, my Lord, I need to do this. Yes, my Lord, I need to do that. Yes, my Lord, I don't like this. Yes, my Lord, I like this. And I should get more of it. And should get more of it. Yeah. And we just say, yes, 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 yes. We always sign the bills, you know, for the, for, for the Lord, you know. But in the end, you know, we have to pay the bill. He eats, you know, to his fullest, you know, but we have to pay the bill. If he does something bad, yeah, we have to go to hell for him. No, we should get in control yeah? <clears throat> and, and throw out the old master, and the master mind of each other, and, and get free. That's why we should, we should 
we should really understand that principle of anatta. Whatever I can see, whatever I can feel, the thoughts that I can see or the thoughts that I know of yeah, cannot be the knowingness. The knowingness we cannot investigate because it is us. All the objects that we know of we can investigate. They cannot be us. There's always subject and object. I think in every language there's subject and object. So, the subject, the knowingness, knows that there's a thought coming up. The subject, or the, the, <coughs> the subject, the know of knowingness, knows that there's a thought coming up. Huh? So, the subject and the object cannot be one and the same thing. Or, Adeline, as a teacher, you should understand that. Subject and object are two different things. Yeah? The subject sees the object or knows of the object. Yeah? So, how can you be that thought? How can you be that feeling? That is the principle of anatta, and it is a very important principle. And it helps us in lots of difficult situations. Yeah? When we say, when we feel depressed or when we feel sad, then we just say, oh, there's sadness, let me lo have a look at it. And then instantly the sadness is gone, or instantly the depression is gone, because we get interested in what, what, is, what we are observing, and then it, it, it loses its base. And then we can investigate where it's coming from. Because the moment we lose our concentration, it's coming back. By, by thoughts, by memories, here, by feelings, and so on, by sensations, whatever. And this is something we have to understand. The clockwork, yeah? how the clock works. Yeah? <clears throat> With these five gears, the five gears of the five khandha. Yeah? The gear of the body, feeling, memory, association, thoughts, yeah? and consciousness. They're, they're running around, you know, just like a clockwork. Hmm? So we have to open up the clock to understand how it works. The key of memory, you know, induces a feeling, brings a feeling with it, you know, I mean, it turns a feeling wheel, yeah? And then the feeling wheel turns a, uh, turn, turns a thought wheel, and the thought wheel turns a memory wheel, and it works, and it works around and works around, and there's no meaning to it when we look at it like that. The moment, just like, you know, you open a watch, you know, an older watch where you still have gears, yeah? When you open a watch, you see the gears running, yeah? And there's no meaning to it. Then you close the watch and suddenly you have time. It's too late, it's too early, you know, it's right on time. And that's the same thing with the five khandhas. The moment we see them, we just observe them like they are, there's no meaning to it. There's no I. There's no ego, there's no personality, there's just gears running, 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 running. Yeah? The moment we say, you know, we are these gears, you know, then we close the watch and then suddenly, oh, I am like this, oh, I am like that, oh, I am, yeah. Oh, I feel this, oh, I feel that, I want this, I want that. And then we open it again, when we go into Samadhi, we open it again, we just see it running. That's it. Then we close it. The moment we come out of Samadhi, we close it. I need this, I, I need to go here, I need to go there, I need to go shopping, you know, or whatever. Yeah, you know, whatever comes in mind. Or I need to go to the toilet. Hmm? Or I need to drink something. Or now I'm so tired, I need to sleep. Yeah? All these things. Who tells us these things? We never ask. Huh? We, we just say, yes, yes, my Lord, you're right, I'm tired. I'm so tired, I'm so tired. When you're so tired, you know, think of something interesting and suddenly you're not tired anymore. Huh? You're just tired of yeah, doing the buddha, 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 or doing the press. Huh? Think of something that makes you really angry, you know, and then you have lots of energy. Yeah? Once you have the energy back, then go back to your breath. Huh? Very simple trick. Why don't we use tricks? You know, I mean, the Kilesas trick us all the time. We can, we can, you know, we can gather a few tricks, yeah, or develop a few tricks, you know, to trick them, yeah? We don't have to be always on the receiving side, on the receiving side of the wit that they use, you know, to, to direct us. Yeah? We can, we can install a whip, yeah, for ourselves, you know, and to drive them out. And one, one thing is, you know, to drive them out for the moment or for momentarily, you know, is going into samadhi where they don't have any power over us. Because we don't believe, you know, there are no more thoughts coming, yeah? When there are no more thoughts coming there <clears throat> and no more memories coming up, yeah? what is there? 
That's just existing, pure existing. That's when we actually live for the first time in our life. There's nobody telling us what, if this experience that we have is nice or not nice, or if you want more or not want. There's no wanting anymore. There's just this pure experience. And we are happy, we are, con we are, we are comfortable. Sometimes we are so happy that tears run down, you know, our cheeks. They can run down for two or three hours. Huh? When the first time we really experience the samadhi, ah, that is what our heart longs for. Yeah? But then when we come out, everything is the same. That's why we need to open our clock, you know, and see how these five gears, the five khandas are working together. And then huh, put some sand in the gears so they stop working together. Understand how they work, yeah? <clears throat> okay, enough for today. Hmm? Any question? Um, uh, how can I uh, try making the breath, breath more interesting? <clears throat> find, <clears throat> find out when the breath starts. When is it at its peak? When is it going down? When does the in breath change to the out breath, and then you do the same with the out breath? When does the out breath change to the interest? It's so interesting. Uh, so I like ask the question. When does the? I mean, in the beginning, you ask this question. You know, I want to know. You know, when it is, yeah. And in the beginning, you might put a label. Now it is at the beginning. Now it is at the head. Now, now it is going out. Now it is. Nothing, yeah, just a mental label. You don't need it very long, yeah? maybe maybe a few hours or maybe a few days, and then, then you can get rid of the label because you know. Yeah? And then you rely on the knowingness when the breath comes in and when the breath is at its height. And if you observe, you know, the breath, then, then it just becomes very clear. And it, it is so interesting in itself. Yeah? <clears throat> And you will see every breath is different. Hmm? And you also will see it, there, there is a moment where there is neither in-breath nor out-breath. Huh? So what, and then, then you can see what makes you breathe in again. Yeah? Uh, just make it interesting. The same thing with the Buddha. You have to make it interesting. Otherwise, the Buddha becomes very boring, you know, and it disappears. Huh? Then paint a Buddha Rupa, you know, that you see. Yeah? A Buddha statue, you know, I have the image of the Buddha statue, you know, and each time, you know, I'm, I either you imagine to bow your head to the Buddha or to the Dhamma or to the Sangha. Do something, you know, to make it interesting so that the mind doesn't go out. Yeah? But that is up to you, you know. I mean, find things, you know, that interest you in the world, yeah. I mean, when, when, when you were younger, what kind of hobbies did you have? Hmm? That interest that you had in the hobbies put into the Buddha or put in the breath. Huh? <clears throat> but how to do it, that is, that is up to you. <laughs> okay. Any other questions? Uh, the, uh, there are these uh, states when I, uh, uh, when I uh, haven't, for example, been uh, been meditating when I uh, when I just come back from uh, uh, from eating, and then I uh, sit down and uh, uh, for uh, for the beginning I follow the Buddha, but then uh, it kind of it kind of disappears and. And and uh, at the end of the meditation, uh, re reflecting back, I see that it was peaceful, but I wasn't with my Buddha. Is it normal? Uh, yeah, that's I quite say? normal. It's the same as the breath disappears. You know, the Buddha disappears, yeah, and we don't notice it because our concentration is not good enough. So when you see it, when you reflect it, you know, and then you notice, okay, this time, you know, I I I want to know when it goes. Yeah, when it disappears, when the Buddha disappears, I want to know that at that time. But it's yeah, it we, felt, we have to learn that. It felt it, it felt peaceful even though the Buddha wasn't there. Yeah, yes, it might be it might be peaceful when when the Buddha isn't there because you do not actually uh, think in the foreground. Yeah. 
But in the background, there are a lot of things yeah, going yeah, on. Yes. Yeah. Yes. See? How can it be peaceful when there are still things are going on? We want to yeah. completely shut down the engine. Yeah? <clears throat> so you're happy. I, people, you know, people are happy with this uh, sort of calmness. But that, that is not yet samadhi. Yeah? Samadhi is when everything stops, when you really... Yeah. I, I noticed that uh, this state doesn't arise because... Uh, because I do, I do my meditation. It just happens uh, by random, and it's yes, it it happens by random. Thing. You know, it can happen. <clears throat> the the important thing is when you come out. Yeah, do you feel tired? Uh, so, sort of yes. Yes. See, that means you have not rested. You know, I mean, you have not yes. gone deep enough. That that is that is a sim- that is a very simple measurement where you can decide what, what was I in samadhi or not. When you come normally, when you come out of samadhi, you're you're really full of energy. You're never tired. But some some people, you know, I mean, they they just open the door to samadhi and feel the cool breeze coming in. Ah, that's so nice, you know, and then they close the door in front of them. And then they open it again, and then they close it, and then they open it and close it. And then they think, oh, it was so nice and peaceful, you know, uh, meditation, but I'm now I'm so tired. <laughs> yeah? Why do you close and open the door all the time? Yeah, Just open it, go in, and close it from behind, and then stay. Hmm? You have to make it also the same, the same answer. You have to make it more interesting so that you can keep up with it. And don't, yeah, the mistake that most people do is then they go on the feeling of calm instead of Buddha. Yeah. Because it's a nice feeling, yeah, and then we are, yeah, it, it, there's nothing wrong with it. But you know, then this feeling slowly goes away, yeah, like every feeling, you know, it just disappears. And we stay on the feeling and then it disappears and then we become sad, you know, in the, towards the end and say, ah, oh, why has it to disappear? And the same thing, you know, that's why I say meditation is like digging a hole. As long as you dig, the hole will get deeper. If you stop digging, you know, the hole slowly fills up. And then you're back, you know, back you know, in the world. Eh? But if you dig, you know, I mean, then the world disappears. Eh? The, de- the deeper the hole is, the, world, the more the world disappears. Yeah? And the sensation, and, and then it slowly closes in, you know, and the only thing that, you, that you're aware of is the body. Yeah? And then, then start of, uh, parts of the body disappear until you're only, you know, aware of, you know, the chitta, you know, the... the, the <clears throat> the area around the chitta, until in the end, you know, everything disappears. Get interested, yeah? I mean, it's the same problem, you know, I mean, we, we, <coughs> we jump on the feeling of, or, or we, we get this heart, and, oh, the Buddha has disappeared, what shall I do, you know, or the breath disappears, what shall I do, yeah? The moment you ask yourself the question, you know, your meditation is wrong. Something went wrong. How can you ask the question, you know, where is my Buddha, or what shall I do now? Your meditation is to stay with the Buddha when the thought comes to return to the Buddha, or return to the breath, yeah? It's so simple, yeah? If we, if we constantly keep that in mind, what our practice is, yeah, the practice of calm meditation or samatha, it is, am I with the Buddha, or am I with the breath, or am I not with the breath? If I'm not with the breath or not with the Buddha, I have to bring it back. That's it. Simple. <laughs> but we forget it. Okay? <laughs>